So this video is essentially going to deal uh, with the kind of coordination that we expect clients and counsels to have in any given round. Now we understand that different formats of mediation or negotiation, depending on what kind of alternate dispute resolution you do, will require different kinds of dynamic between the client and counsel. So for example, in a negotiation or a commercial arbitration, you're dealing more fundamentally with issues to do with commerce. So you're talking about things like your profit margin and things like that. So the division between what the client is expected to know and the counsel is expected to know is very blurred in the sense that, for example, if the client is a CEO of a company, you'd expect him to be well versed with the numbers of, you know, the company's profit margins, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, much in the same way you'd expect the counsel. However, there are some problems which, for example, deal with slightly more emotional issues, like, for example, you were arbitrating or negotiating or in a mediation session for a divorce matter or matters dealing with custody or, for example, if it's ancestral property being split. Anything which has some kind of emotional value ends up requiring slightly greater differentiation in the roles between a client and a counsel and also consequently greater coordination between the two of them. So I'm going to be dealing essentially with the second kind of issue because I feel like there's a larger discrepancy in terms of how the client and the counsel have to react in a given circumstance. So in these sorts of matters where there are some kind of emotional responses required from the client, um, it's essentially good practice for the client to have a factual summary of the issue they're hoping to mediate and for them to be able to project it in a manner that makes the mediator and the other party sympathetic towards them. So ideally, even though both parties have the same general information, in your opening statement, what you're trying to do is make sure that the way you say those facts and the way you present those facts in your opening statement, make it easier for the judges who are judging you and for the mediator to take your side. What this also does is make sure that when the other side decides to cut in or say something that might not come across as the most polite way of dealing with that particular issue, the contrast between a very well sort of emotionally charged opening statement on part of the client and a slightly more rude response from the other side becomes marked and makes it more easy for the judge to see that you're more pro the process so to speak. Um, this doesn't mean that you engage in histrionics, like there's no call for tears or for people like throwing things around or for getting up and for smashing furniture, things like that. Essentially what's expected in these circumstances is kind of a polite but somewhat emotional opening statement on part of the client. The counsel in these circumstances essentially comes out and makes a standard opening statement saying that they're in a supporting capacity and what they intend to do is facilitate the mediation process as well as they can. Um, once the opening statements get over, we think that the biggest mistake that a lot of client counsel pairings do when it comes to mediation rounds and negotiation rounds is kind of start cutting into each other when they start saying things because they feel like they that the person speaking knows a lot more than their teammate does. We think what this does is undercuts the kind of team performance evaluation that a lot of judges have, which is a fairly major criteria in most alternative dispute resolution tournaments. We suggest a couple of things that make sense in, in terms of trying to negate that kind of problem, right? First, I suggest that everybody has a sheet on which they have a couple of words written, right? For example, so you say stop talking or you say let me speak or basically things that you expect the other party to do when you give them a cue. For a lot of teams, it works when this cue is nonverbal. So for example, if you and your teammate have fairly good rapport, as a consequence of knowing each other from before, it makes sense for you to just tap them on the shoulder or like make them know non-verbally by giving them a signal of some sort to stop talking and to let you take over. Secondly, the alternative to this, of course, is to have a piece of paper in front of you with all of these things written so that you can just point to it subtly to your teammate so that it doesn't look like you're cutting in because that oftentimes impairs the kind of impression the judges have of the team that's doing that particular activity. Um, the other important aspect of client counsel pairings and the kind of dynamic they have between them in any kind of round, regardless of what form of alternate dispute resolution you're doing, is to make sure that neither of you undercuts or points out the mistake, a mistake made by the other party. So for example, if a client says something and you're not sure that that's been put forward in the best possible way, as counsel, perhaps you could say, we think to add on to that, what might be a good idea would be to be, or like to say, we think in addition to that, something that we need for you to keep in mind is, and to not say, yeah, but he's wrong. Just listen to what I have to say. What I'm saying makes more sense. This is something we expect client and counsel parents to also be a little bit more wary of because it oftentimes helps, <coughs> helps in making sure that the grade that you get or the marks you get in that particular parameter is much higher. The third thing that we recommend both parties um, 
in a mediation round or like both parties on the same team of a mediation round, client and counsel do, is make sure that their closing statements are also uninterrupted in the sense that if one party is trying to deal with the kind of resolutions you've reached today, the other should make sure that they make it a point to thank the opposite team for coming to the mediation table, thank the mediator for the time that they've given you. Um, this also, again, gives you greater team scores in, in, the, in the sense that one person's good performance then hikes up the other, and it also helps your individual scores to get better. That's about it.